Hello, and welcome to Astronomy Daily. I'm your host, Anna, and today we've got an incredible lineup of stories that span from right here on Earth all the way to the edge of the observable universe. We'll be diving into some intriguing UFO sightings that had people talking around Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. today, explore a fascinating new theory about alien civilizations possibly piloting entire star systems through space, and look at some groundbreaking discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope that are challenging our understanding of black holes. We'll also check out China's latest developments in commercial spaceflight, investigate some mysterious stellar signals that have astronomers excited, and take a moment to celebrate one of science fiction's most influential pioneers. Let's get started. Let's kick things off with a story that has you saying it must have been one of those days. A fascinating story caught the attention of social media today when photos emerged showing mysterious lights hovering above the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. The images, which quickly went viral, showed a formation of gleaming lights that appeared to float directly above the Statue of Freedom at the top of the Capitol dome. Of course, the timing couldn't have been more interesting. These sightings came just weeks after both the Senate and House of Representatives held hearings investigating UFO intelligence, including discussions about alleged secret programs designed to keep UFO data hidden from the public. But before we get too excited about potential extraterrestrial visitors checking in on Congress, experts have stepped forward with a much more down-to-earth explanation. According to former paranormal investigators who examined the photos, what we're actually seeing is a simple optical phenomenon. Lens flares from the streetlights below being reflected in the camera lens. The spacing and pattern of the mysterious lights perfectly match the arrangement of the ground level lighting around the Capitol, just appearing inverted in the image. In fact, this same effect has been causing supposed UFO sightings in photos of the Capitol building for decades. While it might be disappointing to learn that these weren't actually mysterious visitors from another world, it serves as a perfect reminder of how important it is to approach unusual sightings with a critical eye. Often the simplest explanation, in this case basic camera optics, turns out to be the correct one. While on the subject of alien life forms paying us a visit, here's a fascinating idea that sounds like it's straight out of science fiction. What if some of the fastest moving star systems we've observed aren't just natural phenomena, but actually alien civilizations on the move? A provocative new paper suggests exactly that possibility, proposing that advanced extraterrestrial societies might have figured out how to turn their binary star systems into cosmic vehicles. Think about it. If you're an advanced civilization looking to travel between the stars, why build a massive spaceship when you could just take your entire solar system with you? That's the intriguing concept being put forward by philosopher Clement Vidal from Belgium's Vrije University, Brussels. The paper specifically looks at binary systems containing a neutron star paired with a lower mass companion star. These cosmic couples might offer the perfect setup for stellar engineering. By carefully manipulating how material gets ejected from one of the stars, an advanced civilization could theoretically create thrust and steering capability, essentially turning their binary system into an enormous spacecraft. The process would work something like this. Alien engineers could install machinery near the neutron star to take advantage of its intense gravitational energy. By controlling when and how this machinery operates during the star's orbit, they could direct their cosmic vehicle wherever they wanted to go. It's similar to how a rocket works, just on an absolutely massive scale. Remarkably, we've actually observed some binary systems that show unusual acceleration patterns matching what this theory predicts. Two examples are the dramatically named Black Widow and Redback Pulsars. While there's no evidence yet that aliens are behind their peculiar movements, these systems demonstrate that the kind of stellar behavior described in the paper can exist in nature. Of course, this is still very much a hypothesis rather than a confirmed discovery. But it offers an imaginative new lens through which to study some of our galaxy's most puzzling star systems and reminds us to keep our minds open to possibilities that might seem impossible at first glance. All right, let's get back to something that we know a little more about. Astronomers have been scratching their heads over a cosmic mystery that challenges our understanding of the early universe. The James Webb Space Telescope has revealed something that shouldn't be possible. Supermassive black holes already fully formed near the very dawn of time, 
just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. These cosmic giants, ranging from hundreds of thousands to billions of times the mass of our sun, have been spotted in nearly every galaxy we've observed. But their presence so early in cosmic history poses a significant puzzle. You see, we typically understand black holes to form when massive stars die and collapse, but there simply wasn't enough time in the early universe for this process to create such enormous black holes. Now, a new paper might have cracked this cosmic conundrum by suggesting these giants might have had a head start. They could have been born as tiny seed black holes in the first moments of the Big Bang itself. This idea actually builds on work by Stephen Hawking from the 1970s, who proposed that the chaos of the universe's birth might have naturally produced countless miniature black holes, some possibly no bigger than asteroids. While we've never found direct evidence of these primordial black holes, the researchers suggest we might not need many of them. Their calculations show that even a small number of these cosmic seeds, if placed in dense regions of matter, could have grown to supermassive proportions within about 100 million years, exactly when Webb is spotting them. This means these cosmic monsters might have grown alongside the first stars and galaxies, rather than after them, feasting on matter during the cosmic dark ages before the first starlight ever shone. Even our own Milky Way's central black hole might have such ancient origins. While this remains a hypothesis that needs further testing, it offers an elegant solution to what seemed like an impossible cosmic timeline. Meanwhile, back here on Earth. In exciting news from China's space sector, preparations are underway for the inaugural launch of the Long March 12th carrier rocket from the newly constructed Hainan International Commercial Aerospace Launch Center. This launch represents a major step forward for China's commercial space ambitions, marking the first mission from their newest spaceport. The rocket arrived at the facility's number two launch service tower earlier this week, where final preparations are now underway. What makes the Long March 12th particularly noteworthy is its impressive 3.8-meter diameter, the first Chinese rocket of this size. This wider design allows it to carry significantly more propellant than the standard 3.35-meter rockets, translating to enhanced payload capabilities. Standing over 60 meters tall and powered by six liquid oxygen kerosene engines, this two-stage rocket is quite the powerhouse. It's capable of delivering up to 10 metric tons of cargo to low Earth orbit, or six metric tons to a sun-synchronous orbit 700 kilometers above Earth's surface. The new Hainan spaceport itself is equally impressive, representing a collaborative effort between the Hainan provincial government and three major state-owned enterprises. Construction began in July 2022, and the facility now boasts two launch towers. The first tower, completed last December, primarily serves Long March 8th rockets, while the newer second tower can accommodate more than 10 different types of liquid propellant rockets from both the Long March family and private developers. When fully operational, this facility will become China's fifth ground-based launch complex. But notably, it's their first dedicated purely to commercial missions. This represents a significant shift in China's space program, opening new doors for private business involvement in their rapidly expanding space sector. In a breakthrough discovery, astronomers at the Curtin University node of the International Center for Radio Astronomy Research have potentially solved one of space's more peculiar mysteries. They've identified what appears to be the source of some truly bizarre radio signals that pulse through space every three hours, lasting between 30 and 60 seconds each time. This represents the longest period radio transient ever detected. The discovery was made while analyzing archived data from the Murchison Widefield Array, with the signal originating from a location roughly 5,000 light years away in the Puppis constellation. What makes this finding particularly special is that unlike previous detections, which were often obscured by dense star fields, this signal comes from a relatively empty patch of space, allowing astronomers to pinpoint its source with unprecedented clarity. Using the powerful Meerkat telescope in South Africa, researchers trace the signal to a fascinating binary star system. At its heart lies what's known as an M dwarf, a type of star that, despite making up about 70% of all stars in our galaxy, is too dim to see with the naked eye. But here's where it gets really interesting. The energy output from this system is far too powerful to come from an M dwarf alone. The team now believes this M dwarf is paired with a white dwarf, essentially the dense core of a dying star. 
Together, these stellar companions create a cosmic dance that generates these powerful radio emissions. Even more remarkably, evidence suggests this system has been actively broadcasting these signals for at least a decade, possibly longer. This discovery opens up exciting possibilities for finding more such systems. With the Murchison Wide Field Array's massive 55 petabyte archive of observations, equivalent to the storage capacity of 55,000 high-end computers, there could be countless more mysterious signals just waiting to be discovered in our cosmic backyard. Finally today, science fiction enthusiasts have a new reason to celebrate with the release of The Fantasy Worlds of Irwin Allen, a comprehensive 612-page tribute to one of Hollywood's most influential creators. This stunning coffee table book delves deep into the career of the man who shaped the landscape of 1960s television science fiction and pioneered the disaster film genre. Allen's remarkable contributions to entertainment span nearly five decades, but it was his groundbreaking television series that truly captured the imagination of audiences worldwide. From the adventures of the Robinson family in Lost in Space to the underwater explorations in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Allen had an extraordinary talent for creating bold, visionary worlds that pushed the boundaries of what was possible on television. What set Allen's work apart was his innovative use of special effects and his ability to bring movie-quality production values to the small screen. At 20th Century Fox, he masterfully utilized the studio's vast resources, from its sprawling lots and sound stages to its extensive library of props and costumes, creating shows that were visually stunning for their time. His creative vision gave us iconic characters and vessels that have become permanent fixtures in pop culture, from the beloved robot in Lost in Space to the sleek design of the Jupiter 2 spacecraft. The impact of Allen's work extends far beyond his time, influencing generations of filmmakers and television producers. His transition into feature films with classics like The Poseidon Adventure and The Towering Inferno essentially created the blueprint for the modern disaster movie genre. These films demonstrated his unique ability to combine spectacular visual effects with compelling human drama, a formula that continues to influence blockbuster filmmaking today. If you'd like to check the book out, I've put a link in the show notes. Well, that brings us to the end of another fascinating episode of Astronomy Daily. I'm Anna, and it's been my pleasure bringing you these incredible stories from the depths of space to the frontiers of scientific discovery. If you've enjoyed today's episode and want to stay on top of all the latest developments in space and astronomy, I've got great news for you. You can visit us at astronomydaily.io, where we maintain a constantly updating news feed of the latest space and astronomy news. While you're there, you can also catch up on all our previous episodes and sign up for our free daily newsletter. And hey, we'd love to connect with you on social media too. You can find us on all major platforms. Just search for Astro Daily Pod on Facebook, X, YouTube, Tumblr, and TikTok. Join our growing community of space enthusiasts and be part of the conversation about the wonders of our universe. Thanks for listening, and remember to keep looking up. There's always something amazing happening in the cosmos. See you tomorrow on Astronomy Daily. Astronomy.